All right, welcome to Dreamforce, guys. First day of the conference, got a good energy in the air. It's always fun, you know? Because by the end of the Dreamforce, we're all just wiped and ready to go home. So um, hopefully, our presentation today will get you guys started off on a good note. I think we're presenting on a really cool topic. Um, by way of introdu introduction, uh, my name is Nick Mortensen. Um, I am the technical solutions manager for a company called Ide Bailey. And this is Fred Barron, he's my lead developer. So Ide Bailey is an accounting firm that's actually based in Fargo, North Dakota, but we have a pretty big technology consulting division and, and a big Salesforce group which is based in, in Lehigh, Utah. So um, today we're going to be talking about, oh, first the, uh, the Harbor Statement, you know, it's a publicly traded company, don't buy it on promises, buy it on what features are available now. The good thing is everything we're going to be talking about today is available now, so Let's go ahead and move to the next slide. So today I kind of want to talk about the dream, right? So the dream being achieving admin configurability. So for you guys that are developers, how many of you have been stuck with, you know, you get knee deep in a project that you're really, really enjoying and, and your, your head's down in the code and you get tapped on the shoulder and you get pulled away to go make some small logic change in some process automation or, or, or business flow or something and you got to stop what you're doing, you got to go talk to the stakeholders, find out what the expected functionality is, what, what's actually happening, go find the code that you need to update, make the changes, update the test class, push to production, it, it's a hassle. And for you admins in the room, how many of you on you know, the flip side of the table need to make a small change to the logic in your automation or your business flow, and you got to stop what you're doing, go find a developer and wait for a week for them to get your change is done, right? It, it's a hassle on both sides. And so today, we're going to talk about some of the tools that Salesforce has provided for us to actually put the power of the business logic back in the hands of the admin, allowing you guys to build code that's dynamic and compiles at runtime. Really cool stuff. Um, Salesforce has provided three tools that we can use. Custom labels, custom settings, and custom metadata. So metadata is a newer feature that Salesforce has put out, so that's where the focus of our presentation is going to be today. Um, but in order to really understand what custom metadata is, when we want to use it, when to choose metadata over settings or labels, we're going to go over labels and settings really quick. And so to kind of put this into context, just a real uh, easy situation, let's say we're working for a company and we're, and we're modifying a commission structure. The commission structure changes a lot, and, and so you know we need to put a commission structure in place. So first, let's go over labels. Um, labels are very, very simple. It's, it's a single text field. It's originally built for translations in Visual Force pages. So if you have some really cool community that's got a custom login page and you got something in, you know, you got a lot of customers in Korea or China or, or Mexico and you need to have a different language available. They have those, the, they created these custom labels. So for example, when you have login in the top right hand corner and you want to change that to Korean or Chinese or something like that, you can put that text value in a custom label and then when you render your page in Korea and you have that language tag, it allows you to go in and update those things without having to go in and actually modify code. Um, you can, We've seen it used a million different ways, just really for any one-off text value in Apex. Um, but it, it's very simple. That's all it is, is it's a single value. So next, and I'm going to breeze over these really fast. These slides will be available afterwards. So if, if there's information that you're trying to like scramble and write down, don't worry. This will be up um, on the chatter feed later. So I'm going I'm to breeze over these really quick. So custom settings. We call these flat objects. It has the same sort of user interface that's, that custom objects do in Salesforce. You know, you, you create an object and then you go in and you enter values. Um, very, very similar except you can't report on it and there's simple data types. So you've got, you don't have lookups or any of those complex data types. It's really just strings and, and numbers and, you know, characters that you can store in these settings. Um, Something kind of cool about custom settings is they're automatically cached for you. So when you're loading a Visual Force page or, 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 or executing some Apex, that stuff is already in memory. You don't have to make a call out to the database. Very quick to, to access these variables and, and leverage them in your, your custom code. And then another big differentiator is they're editable via Apex and the, the hierarchy. 
in your custom settings. So if we're going back to this commission example, let's say we have a base commission for the whole organization, but we've got one super sales guy that we really wanted to bring to our team, so we gave him a special commission structure. Um, custom settings has functionality built in that has this kind of hierarchy. So you set the default, and then you can set an override value. So that, that's kind of a, a cool feature that custom settings has. Um, again, I'm, we're not going to dive super deep into these because we really want to focus on the metadata. So let's go to the next uh, slide. So what makes metadata different? It, it's actually very similar to custom settings, um, but you, the big differentiator is that everything is metadata. It's all deployable, right? So for example, if I go in and I create a, a warehouse custom object in Salesforce, and I want to push that, and, I, and then I go in and I create warehouse A, warehouse B, warehouse C in the sandbox, and I move that to production, all I get is the object. I don't get warehouse A or B or C, right? Because that's data, and change sets, packages, that only moves metadata. And so what Salesforce has provided is a way to actually move the data in change sets and packages by using this new feature. Um, so really helpful if you want default values and packages that you're, you're publishing or if you're, you're creating an app and you want some things to be configurable. You know, it's a really, really neat option. Um, it is not editable directly in Apex. You can edit it with an API, but that's a discussion for another day. Um, you do have to access this via a query, but once you query it, that information is cached and quickly accessible like the settings, but you do have to make that initial database call. Um, so that's really a quick overview, and I'm going to turn the, the, the presentation over to Fred in just a second. Um, and he's going to walk you through a use case. Um, and so I kind of want to lay the foundation real quick for this use case. So let's say I work for parent company. We have company A, company B, company C, and all of these companies have their own Salesforce org. We have a multi-org architecture. So I work for the parent company, and we decide we want a standardized commission structure across all these companies, right? So we want to be able to calculate sales commissions in the same way in company A, B, and C. These commission structures are subject to frequent change. So they're constantly changing, which means you know, right off the bat you should think, OK, I don't want to hard code any of that business logic in, because I don't want to have to go in and create a new change set and push things every time I want to make a change. Company A, Company B, Company C have no in-house developers, but they do have admins. So they have admins that can, can help maintain it. And the changes that you make to the commission structure, once again, they need to be reflected in all three of these different orgs. Right? So, so what do you choose in this particular use case? So if you go to the next slide, all right, so we've got labels, settings, and metadata. Now, a lot of the time, you, settings really has some pretty cool features. Um, so you can see here. You don't have to query it like we talked about before. Um, it's already cached, so your, your code doesn't have to make a query. It's a little bit more, um, you know, it, it's quicker executing. It's available in workflow rules, which is a really cool feature. It's editable directly via Apex, so I don't have to write some crazy API callout to manipulate these. Let's say I wanted to build a pretty visual force page to display the values, uh, you know, the commission tiers and something like that, and I wanted to go in and edit those values in that page. I can't edit metadata directly in Apex. I have to use an API callout to do that. So settings is kind of a cool option for that. And then you have that default and that override, right? So that hierarchy that, that custom settings provides. So at first glance, custom settings might seem like the more robust option. But with the use case of company A, B, and C, we want to make those changes in one place and push those changes to all three of these separate orgs. Metadata at that point in time clearly becomes the correct choice for this particular use case. Because I can put the commission tiers, I can define those as metadata, and deploy them via chain sets or a package or something like that to all three of my different orgs all at one time. And now I have one place that I need to go to make changes, right? So we all know dry, right? Don't repeat yourself. We're utilizing that same sort of principle in this right here. We're able to go make the changes in one place and push those changes to all three orgs so everywhere has the same structure. So now I'm going to turn it over to Fred, and we're going to dive into the cool stuff. So he's going to actually show you in Salesforce um, the code and the visual force and all that kind of fun stuff. All right, so let's get into Salesforce here. OK. Here's our commission structure. Okay. Basically, it's a certain 
number of sales every month or a certain dollar amount, okay? Over on this side, we've got what our salespeople are earning, um, okay? So let's look real quick at the actual metadata that drives this. So we're gonna go into settings. And again, when you're setting up metadata, it's like setting up just a standard object. You have your regular fields, you have your lookups, um, it's going to be very familiar when you actually create a new custom metadata. So what I've got in here is I've got these different levels. And I've got one up here that says test, do not modify. We'll come back to this one in just a second when we get into the code, um, why we have that. So I can go in here. I can edit a level. I can change the dollar amount. I can change the sale, number of sales I need. I can change their pay rate. All right here, just like a standard object. The beauty of this is, like Nick said, I can now take this data, because it is metadata, I can put it in a package, I can put it in a chain set, I can deploy it to production, I can deploy it to multiple orgs. If you're building a managed package, this is a fantastic way to move settings for your managed package out to orgs. All right, so let's get into the actual code. How do we use? Metadata, how did we set this up? How does this work? Okay. So the first thing, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom of my code. And you're going to see right here what I've selected. This should look very, very familiar. It's a SOQL. Okay. The difference is right here what I am selecting from. You'll notice that there's MDT instead of C. So I'm telling it that I'm going to select custom metadata. All the rest of it is exactly the same. I'm going to treat it just like a regular S object. Okay. Once I've done that, I'm going to put it into a list. I can use it however I want in my code. So what we've got is we've got this is a utility method that finds the commission of our salespeople. Okay. So we've got find commission here. Now one of the things you'll notice is I have two different methods in here, rate by sales and rate by dollars. Now, one of the things, this is one of the caveats of using metadata, you cannot use an OR statement in your select. If you use an OR statement, it's going to fail. So what I've done is I've done two separate statements. I'm selecting if it's a certain dollar amount or a certain number of sales. And then I'm taking the maximum. We want to give them the maximum per percentage between the two of them. All right, let me open up the test for this. Where's my test class? Uh, my test class is not showing up. All right, my, my test class is not showing up for some reason. So earlier I was showing the test data. Let me go back to that. When you're testing, when you're creating your test classes to deploy it, you cannot edit metadata in your test class. So we've got to have something that says, this is test data. And I've got this checkbox over here, test data. So this is not used in the normal commission structure. You won't see it in the normal commission structure. I've set up very specific amounts. And then in my test classes, I'm going to use this specifically. So my test classes will pass no matter what the admin does to change this commission structure. OK. So now let me show you the power of this. Let's go back to the commission here real quick. And you'll see here I've got 5% at $5,000 or five sales. 10% goes up to 15000 Now our sales manager has come to us and said, whoa, wait a second. We, we've got this huge jump. We need a level in between 5% and 10%. So we're going to put in a 7.5%. Uh, wrong one. So I'm going to go back into the setup. And this is, this is something that an admin can very, very easily do. And the reason why is that it's just like I said earlier, it's just editing records. So we're going to say this is at uh, 10 sales. $10,000 a month, and they're going to get 7.5%. So 
So now if I go back to my commission structure, I have completely changed my code, my page, by changing one custom metadata. Now some of the things that we've used this for is things like uh, integrations. If you're doing an API integration and you need to change field settings, you can set everything up in your sandbox, you can test it, and then push it to production. All right, that is the power of custom metadata. That is how we're using it in our consulting practice, is we are helping our customers by giving them that ability to, to change settings, deploy settings, so that we can build more features for them. Thank you for coming today. If there's any questions, we'll be available to ask them. You can come up and ask us any questions about what we have done here today. Thanks, guys.